<laughs> it's really interesting. I saw that like, when I was getting into university, I had to go through medical checkups yeah. for them to deem me fit to study. But now I'm starting to see that there are other yardsticks for determining a person's health or a person's health status or a person's fitness. And these other um, yardsticks have been set by Malam Garba Shehu. Now, the president was upbeat yesterday as he declared President Muhammad Buhari uh, fit to face the rigors of next year's presidential contest slated for February, citing the president's 800 meters walk home from the prayer ground as evidence of his clean state of health. The president returned from a 10-day working visit um, vacation last weekend and proceeded to his Dara Katsina state home uh, for the Idel Kaber Festival on Monday. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Malam Garba Shehu, in a statement said, if anyone was in doubt about the fitness of the president, yesterday's walk home and cheers from his supporters was enough to raise such doubts. Malam Garba Shehu said the president undertook the work the walk after joining the emir of Daura, Alaji Umar Farouk, and other Muslim faithful to observe the Eid prayers at Kofar Arawa Eid Ground, Dara in Katsina State. We'd always say Idel Kabir to all our Muslim Absolutely. friends and our Muslim brothers and sisters who are celebrating, and even to the president who's also celebrating. Well, I don't understand this story, Lila. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard to contain my laughter right now because I don't understand personally how an 800 meter walk can declare someone as fit for presidency. And I think that is quite a skewed impression to give the public and put through the news outlets because that doesn't necessarily depict fit for presidency. That's there are right, other yes. things that you can come with and say, this is what President Muhammad Dubahari has done in the past three and a half years in office. And this is what makes him fit to rule the country from 2019 to 2023. But to come out into our media outlets and bring news saying that he walked 800 meters in his hometown and that makes him fit for presidency, quite frankly, I think that's a bit of an insult on so the Nigerian I populace. I think the reason why he's saying this would be because President Muhammad's health has been, Muhammad Wari's health has been a subject of controversy in Nigeria. Now, we've seen him take several vacations. He's gone to, EN, to do the ENT checkup in the UK. He's gone for several medical well, checkups. Well, did they ever tell us that presidents cannot walk? No. But because Nigerians had said, this man is old, this man is ill, every time he's traveling out of the country to get checked, are you sure he's healthy enough to run for How office? How many meters does he walk in Asso Rock every day? So, at the end of the day, him having walked 800 meters seems to be the yardstick that the senior special um, advisor to the president on media and publicity thinks is um, the yardstick, which I think is a very, very flawed um, yardstick, or it, it's a terrible meters. litmus test to use. 800 meters is less than a 15-minute walk at a very slow pace. Leila, I don't even care if 800 meters was a one-hour walk. I don't even care if... Because at the end of the day, when it comes to health, what proves that you're healthy is not how you look on the outside. We've seen situations where it's, you know, back in the day, we used to think that if you're skinny, you're healthy. But we've seen it being proved time and time again that one could be skinny yeah. and be unhealthy. What determines someone's health status is what the medical reports give. So our interest is not in the president having walked 800 kilometers. We're very happy for him that he was able to walk 800 kilometers. Our prayer is that he will live a healthy life. But that's not the yardstick for determining someone's health. 800 meters. But beyond that, it's also, it puts a, it puts a very bright light on the president's um, public relations team because that is not a story to bring out, especially if we're trying to do certain things in campaign mode. I don't want to say too much. The, but they should have actually focused on limiting the conversation to Idel Kabir yeah. and the holiday and, you know, celebrating with Muslim faithfuls and ensuring that they push across the message of sacrifice, which is what Idel Kabir is seeking to push. Sacrifice, not just sacrifice majorly from our politicians, our government mm -hmm. officials, because we find at the end of the day, they are not sacrificing. They are collecting running costs. They are collecting security votes. They are mm -hmm. collecting all the things that the average Nigerian cannot yeah. afford. And so Eid that is Kabir, what we should be pushing. Exactly. exactly. And Eid al-Kabir also recognizes Ibrahim, who's Abraham in the Bible. And the entire story is about how Abraham listened to God and actually sacrificed his son for God, right? This is the exact same story in the Quran. And that is exactly what the celebration is actually about. So it brings a lot it brings a lot within us because it takes us back to something. We can have an outlook on our president, we can have an outlook on our polity, but we have to be able to ask the right questions. What sacrifice are you making for your people? It's not enough to just be in public office based on votes, but you have to act on the votes that you got to get there. How much action are we seeing? How much demand are we actually seeing? Sorry, how, much, uh, respons how many responses are we seeing to the demand that we are giving you? You know, these are the sacrifices that we want from you. And I think it's significant to point that out, especially when that is what 
Eid El Kabir is all about. And as a follow up to what you've just said, Eid El Kabir also shows obedience. Mm -hmm. I once saw somewhere that obedience is the highest form of worship. You can't say that you worship a God, Christian or Muslim or traditional, and mm. you don't obey what that God asks you to do. So as a politician put in power, you've been put there to serve the people. You swore an oath of allegiance to the Nigerian people. Are you obedient to that oath that you swore? Are you keeping to the tenets of what you have promised to do? These are the things that we should be reminded on holidays like this. And we should not put our focus on 800 meter walks because that does not determine anything. We're happy that the president was able to do the work. We celebrate with the president. We show our support and our celebration for our Muslim brothers. But that is not the focus of A our A better headline for me would have been that the president is literally united with his people in his hometown of Dawa to celebrate Eid al Kabir. That would have made a lot more sense because if there's one message that we are supposed to promote, it is that of unity and not necessarily that of an 800 meter walk. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.